Hi everybody, May the 4th be with you, and in this video I am going over Character Building 101. I'm going to go through the general process of making a character and briefly go over all of the classes and what their abilities and role in the party would be. Um, I plan to make more specific delves into each of the classes and videos in the future, but this is a general introductory to building your character. Thank you. Character Building 101, Learning to Play D&D. First, picking a race. The different races of D&D have unique abilities and feats. Certain race and class combinations are better choices than others. For example, being an elf gives you a plus two to your dexterity. So classes that use dexterity for abilities or magic may be a good choice. If this doesn't matter to you, then pick the race that you are the most interested in. D&D Beyond has a great mechanic for clicking on a race and getting info. If you go to build a character and move and click on a race, it should give you general information as well as what um, ability modifiers you would get by choosing that race. Feats are special abilities. Depending on what race you select, as well as optional rules your dungeon master can use, you will occasionally be granted special abilities called feats. For example, the halfling race has the lucky feat, which allows you to re-roll ability checks where you roll a 1. This is a huge special ability, considering that rolling a 1 usually means a critical failure of whatever it is you are attempting to do. This is just one of the examples of a feat that you can have depending on the race that you pick. Picking a class. The different classes of D&D have different functions within a party. There are classes that are the leader, Striker, Defender, Controller, for example. These are terms from 4th edition that I'm using. Think about what kind of role you'd like to have in combat. Would you rather use magic but be a heavy hitter? Would you rather use weaponry and have like archery or heal and take kind of a back seat? Um, just think about these things and it will help you pick what kind of class you'd like. So let's break down the classes. First, a fighter. Fighter is a martial-focused combat. Um, they are typically in the front line. They are masters of weapons and armor. As a fighter, you will choose a fighting style. You can choose ranged, dual, or two-weapon fighting, for example. Constitution, for hit points and endurance, as well as strength or dexterity, are top-used abilities by fighters. A barbarian. A barbarian is also a frontliner, but they are combat and non-magic. They are known for getting angry and dealing damage. Specifically, the rage ability. If a barbarian goes into rage, then they have resistance to damage and other perks such as advantage on um, certain ability checks. Strength and constitution are top used abilities for barbarians. Next, a sorcerer. Magic, innate spellcasting. Sorcerers are versatile spellcasters that were born with their arcane abilities, at least most of the time. They can serve as a blaster, a striker, a utility caster, or a controller. Um, charisma is the ability used for a sorcerer's magic, which also makes them a great face for the party if negotiations are needed. Next, a wizard. Magic, largest spellbook. So wizards are spellcasters that learn from spellbooks and scrolls. Because of this, you can master any spell that you read, but you have limited spell slots. You can choose to prepare different spells for different adventures, and you have the highest amount of spells prepared, but you still have limited spell slots. Um, intelligence is a wizard spellcasting ability because their magic comes from what they read. Next is a rogue, stealth scoundrel, combat, and minimal magic. Um, rogues can be scouts, trackers, assassins, etc. They're great with locks, traps, stealth, and other proficiencies. If you need someone to go ahead and stake out how many guards there are, or sneak around and get a good look, a rogue is what you want to choose. They have a sneak attack ability that allows the dealing of extra damage, if sneak attack applies. Dexterity is the most used ability for the rogue due to the agility-ness, but they are also charisma. They can serve as a party face and are very deceptive when it comes to lying to an NPC to get their way. Next is a ranger. Rangers are trackers, they're great with hunting monsters, they're good with combat, and they have magic as well. Um, known as warriors of the wilderness, they're great with archery, dual wielding, tra tracking... <clears throat> 
Known as warriors of the wilderness, they're great with archery, dual wielding, tracking, and animal handling. They can have spells such as Hunter's Mark, an Alarm Spell, etc. You can choose a favored enemy, which allows for bonuses when fighting against them. Dexterity is the most used ability, with Wisdom as a strong second choice. Next is a Cleric. A Cleric is a divine spellcaster. They embody the deity that they serve. The divine domain... The divine domain that you choose affects the abilities that you have. Clerics make excellent healers, but you can also choose to be a heavily armored cleric and be in the front line, or stay in the back and use magic from a ranged distance. Wisdom is the most used ability, followed by the ability of their deity's domain. Next is a paladin. Paladins are honor-bound. They uphold their deity's laws. Paladins are very focused on alignment. They're a holy warrior bound to a specific oath. They're combat heavy, but they gain divine magic at second level. The reason alignment is so important is because a paladin can lose their blessings of their deity if they abandon their deity's ideals. Strength and charisma are the most used abilities for a paladin. Next is a warlock. A warlock gained their magic from selling their soul. As it said, they gain their magic from an otherworldly patron. Depending on what patron it is, you have different abilities. It can be a devil lord, a fiend, an archfey, something like that. They have low spell counts but maximum output. Charisma is the most used ability for a warlock. Next is a monk, a disciplined combatant. They're masters of martial arts, highly spiritual. Using key points that only monks can have, it can allow for multiple unarmed strikes, or known as a fury of blows. Dexterity is the most used ability for the monk due to the agility. Next is a druid. A druid is a primal spellcaster, an upholder of nature. They cannot use metal weapons or armor due to this. However, they have a very versatile spell list. They can attack, have utility spells, enhance themselves or their party members, or even heal. They can adopt animal forms at a certain level, or wild shape. And, as that animal, they can be heavy combatants. Wisdom is the most used ability for a druid. Last is a bard. A bard is a charismatic spellcaster. They use magic through performance. A bard is a powerful magician slash musician that can inspire their party members through song or monologue. The bardic college that you choose decides what abilities you have. You can heal, but you can also generally buff, which means enhance the ability of yourself or your party members momentarily, or debuff, which is remove certain abilities that um, a fiend or enemy might have that you're fighting. Charisma is the most used ability for the bard, and because of their charisma and their performance abilities, they make great negotiators as well. Resources in order to deeper dive into the classes. Um, I have used RPG Bot, and you can look up whatever class you're trying to search and then add Handbook 5th Edition at the end. It has great information for what races are great for each class and other things like that. And also, as I said before, DD Beyond um, has a great resource for getting a general idea of the classes. So, ability scores and how to calculate them. Um, The simplest method is standard array. There are six numbers, 15, 14, 13, 12, 10, and 8, and you get to choose where each number goes. You'll want to put the 15 in the most important ability for the class that you choose, and the 8 in the least important ability. I specified in the slides what ability was important for each class. There is another method called point by. Uh, You get 27 points total, and you get to add points to each stat until you run out of 27. Um, You'll want to put the highest number in the most important ability for your class and the lowest number in the least important ability here, too. Um, I prefer standard array from the two of these. There is a manual way to put stats, although I have found this to become very unbalanced when certain party members roll very high and certain party members are more unlucky in their roles. I do not recommend this, but some dungeon masters will have you roll for abilities. Um, In high fantasy... Um, you can roll the d6 four times and drop the lowest roll. Or for mid or low fantasy, you can roll the d6 three times and keep your score. Um, You'll want your highest roll to go to your most important ability and your lowest roll to go to the least important ability, as with the others. Um, A more interesting way to think about this is you could roll stats before choosing a race or class and see where the dice gods lead you. If you 
role very highly for charisma, then you might look at picking a charismatic character. Um, that's just one method of um, calculating ability scores, although I always stick with standard array. It's the simplest method, and I feel it's the most balanced. Next is picking a background. Your background that you choose will help you develop your backstory for your character. You can be a noble, a folk hero, soldier, criminal, etc. There are other choices, and this will help you delve into the kind of person you are, and give you some minor perks when it comes with interactions with NPCs. Extras. Lastly, in building your character, you'll want to look at the physical description. What color is their hair? Their eyes? How tall are they? Are they heavy set or are they super thin? Of what gender are they? How old are they? Um, other character details, including alignment. Um, as I said before, alignment is very important to paladins and is also a great basis um, for role playing as your character. Um, I made a video for alignment that you can take a look at. Faith, does your character um, worship a certain deity? What kind of lifestyle does your character have? Do they have a lot of money? Do they not? Um, things like this. Personal characteristics, personality, ideals, bonds, flaws. Um, D&D Beyond has a great resource for calculating this, but there are also random tables online that you can roll D6s for to decide these. Um, and last is notes. You can make note of enemies that you may have from your background, allies that you may have found throughout, and just your general backstory as to what your character went through as a child and why they're where you are today. Um, thank you so much. This is a general um, character building 101. I plan on going deeper into each class in future videos. Thank you so much. If this video was helpful to you, go ahead and like and leave a comment. Um, also, if you are looking for any other specific help on building a character, leave a comment. I would be happy to make more videos. Um, thank you so much. Bye!